Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install a custom carbon fiber steering wheel with an LED display in your car at home. So I've broken this down into four easy steps for you guys. First, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the battery and remove our old steering wheel. Next, we're going to transfer over all of these buttons and the wiring harness. Third, we're going to figure out how to wire in this LED display. So we need power and we need a ground. And then lastly, we're going to reinstall everything and go for a test drive. So stay tuned. So I actually bought this steering wheel off of AliExpress. It came within three weeks actually, which is pretty quick considering other companies typically take uh, four to six weeks. And I went to China because I wanted to go straight to the source. Other companies that claim that they're making their own steering wheels typically do not. So I think it's just better and it's cheaper. Cut out the middleman, just go straight to the source. So the first step is gonna to be to disconnect the negative terminal of your battery. So I've already gone ahead and done that. And the second, we're gonna to have to remove the airbag. So back here, there is a little hole just right here. So we're gonna stick a flathead up there and there's a spring that actually holds the airbag in. So we're gonna alleviate the tension from the spring and this airbag should pop right out. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm just gonna grab my flathead, stick it up in this hole, make sure not to damage the leather around it. There we go. And then we've gotten the airbag out. Now we can see that inside here is the airbag connector. So we're just gonna quickly disconnect that first before we get started on anything else. Because the airbag, even though the battery's disconnected, it's still a pretty uh, exciting thing. So we just wanna disconnect it and make sure nothing uh, explodes. All right, so before we remove this actual bolt that holds the steering wheel to the steering column, we're gonna to wanna to remove these connectors. This is just because these connectors connect to the actual clock spring, and the clock spring is not gonna come out with the steering wheel. So we just wanna remove them before we do anything else so we don't end up snagging them when we go to remove the entire steering wheel itself. All right, so once we have all of those connectors disconnected, we're gonna grab our trusty dandy breaker bar because this bolt here is gonna be on really, really tight. So we're gonna need some leverage. So we're gonna get our breaker bar on. And then we're just gonna hold the steering wheel and break it free, just like that. And then we can get the rest off by hand. And there we go, we have the bolt out. And then we're just gonna wanna take note of where the steering wheel is. So you can see that there's that little line there and there's this little square thing. So it looks like it's nearly centered on that little square thing, just one tooth over. So we're gonna ensure we're gonna make sure when we go to reinstall the new wheel that it lines up the same way. Now we can go ahead and pull this old steering wheel off. We're gonna pull it off straight and we're just gonna double check that everything is disconnected. Perfect. So this is also really important. Don't spin around this clock spring here because if you spin it around too many times, it can damage the wires inside of it. It's only made to spin a certain amount. So we just leave that be, don't play with that too much. And then we can move on to transferring over these buttons and these brackets. And now we can get a nice side-by-side -side comparison of the old Beat steering wheel versus the brand new custom one. Look at that, a huge difference. Okay, so we're gonna start off with removing these two screw, uh, yeah, screws here. They are a T20 Torx. And that will allow us to remove this entire section here. All right, so now that we have those two screws out, I'm just gonna pop this cover up. It's gonna be a little tight on there. But it will come out. There we go. So now we can disconnect these two connectors here. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can put this off to the side and we can go ahead and remove all of these Phillips heads. 
So once you've removed those four screws, you can just gently lift this out. Put that off to the side. And then these buttons are actually clipped into place. So we're gonna take these things out. These are for the rocking switch. And then for the rocking switch, we can just grab a pick and just gently, very gently unclip it. And we should be able to just push it out. Maybe not. There we go. So we got that switch out. And you can see how fragile these clips actually are. So you want to be really careful not to break these. We're gonna do the same thing for these ones so for this one you can't really get access to the clips so you kind of just have to pry up and hope for the best okay that one's out you can see on this one as well these little clips and then the last one here on this side there you go Oh, and this one, it looks like we broke the clip a little bit. So we're going to see, hopefully it'll still hold. If not, we'll have to get a new one of those. But again, this is really tedious. It's very easy to mess it up, just like I just messed it up. So be really careful when you're doing this. Now we can grab our new carbon piece. Just spin it around and we can see it's the same thing. Place. And this one we can start with, so I think the plus goes on top. We'll try to just clip it in from this side here. Perfect. Then we can put these in at the end, otherwise they're just gonna fall out again. Okay, and then Clip these on from the top as well. Perfect. And this is the one that broke, so hopefully it'll still hold. Does it hold? Yes, it does, so that's okay. All right, then we can flip this around. Get these two little white walker things on and we can just grab this put it back into place and then tighten those four screws down okay so next we're gonna want to remove these four screws here those are just uh t25s that's because this spring this is what holds in the airbag our new steering wheel doesn't come with that so we're gonna have to transfer this one over so this steering wheel that I have here, and my, my original steering wheel, you can see that it has a wire that goes to the surround of the steering wheel. That's for the heated steering. So unfortunately with this modification, I'm sure if you pay a little extra, you can get heated steering uh, in your new steering wheel. But I don't know if those uh, Chinese sellers do it. So just be aware of that. You'll probably lose your heated steering function. So this has your harness attached to it. I'm sure you can take this off, there's no point. So now we can transfer this over to the new wheel. So with that spring and the wiring harness transferred over, it should look something like this. Make sure you route the wiring harness the same way that the OEM steering wheel routed it. Now what we're gonna do is we can reinstall this back on. So first we're gonna connect these connectors back into the buttons. We can see that this steering wheel has holes in it, just like that, and the trim piece has a little dowels. So we're just gonna line those up and then push it in tight. Make sure the wires aren't in the way. Oh, that little crack was not nice, but it's okay. There we go. And then we can go and reinstall these two screws that we removed earlier. 
So I've gone ahead and reconnected the battery just because we need to test these pins and see which one has power uh, when the car is on. So this one here is going to be empty because that's for the uh, heated steering. Same thing with this one here. And this one we're not going to even test because that's for the air, airbag system. We don't want to attach, uh, we don't want to grab power from the airbag system. So the only place we can really get power from is this harness here the or the heated steering wheel harnesses. So I'm going to go ahead and test each of these pins and see if they have power with the car on in accessory mode. Okay, so I tested all of the pins. None of them have 12 volts. So the most we got was five volts. Unfortunately, that's not gonna work for our steering wheel because this requires 12 volts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the clock spring and we're gonna have to manually add a 12 volt wire. So to remove the clock spring, we're just gonna pry up on this cover right here. Just like that, we can put that off to the side. And now we can see that we have complete access to the clock spring. So we're just going to remove this, uh, this screw here, this one down here, this one here, this one in the middle right here, and there's one up here, and the last one up here. All right, and then there's also, we're going to have to remove this outer shell. So there's one screw at the bottom here. It's got some type of clip in it as well. And then there's two similar type of screws up here at the top. And then if you just give it a good yank, it comes off just like that top one same story perfect so we can move that off to the side and now we can slide the entire clock spring assembly out all right guys so some change of plans instead of using this pin down here i'm using pin number six up here that's because in the factory harness you can see that the pin isn't being used so pin number six here matches up to pin number six here i use my uh, multimeter and what i'm gonna do is take this apart i'm gonna pop this connector out and cut off pin number six and then you can see you can see right there that little gold bit i'm gonna solder a wire to that that way i can run that wire around to a 12 volt power source and that way we can power our steering wheel using the factory harness and just pin number six up here okay so being extremely careful there's these three clips two on this side one on this side here and then these two here and then you're going to pry those up and then you can slide this connector out just like that you want to be extremely careful not to break any of these because if you do you're gonna have to buy a whole new clock spring so i'm gonna grab this pin at the end right here pin number six i'm gonna cut that off because if i don't cut it off it's not gonna seed into the connector properly and i'm just gonna put a wire soldering wire just to this point right here okay so using my soldering iron as you can see i broke off this little pin right here and I soldered this wire to that pin so now just to test our work, we're gonna put our multimeter back into continuity mode. Touch this side here and this side to pin number six. And then if it beeps, there we go. That means this wire is connected to this pin right here. So for my 12 volt supply, I'm just gonna be using the power for my meth gauge because I've already used a fuse or a, uh, a wire that only has power when the key is on. All right, so as you guys can see, I soldered and heat shrunk the wires together. So now with this wire, when the key is on, it'll have power, 12 volts. And then the same thing with this pin up here. So I'm just gonna connect the battery and double check that that actually is true. And then we can get on with installing the wheel. So what I did next was I cut the little connector that was on this here because this is for the heated steering and we're not going to be using that anymore. So I took the pin and the wire out, out from that and I connected it to the LED display uh, power line. So we're just going to heat shrink that. And then I'm going to take this pin and insert it into uh, number six right here. So that way it will connect to that pin that we gave power through this cable down here. That will ensure that we have proper connection and it'll all be plug and play when we're said and done okay so i've turned the car back on 
and we're just going to test to make sure that the LED display actually works. So I'm just going to take this, ground it to the steering wheel here, and there we have it guys. You can see that it turns on. So I'm just going to get a little spade connector or something for this, and then just screw it onto here. So all right, so the clock spring is back in place. All of these black bolts are in, hand tightened. I just routed this little wire in a way that it won't get pinched. And then I just clip these back into place and then put the two screws up there. And there's one little clip down here. Now we're finally ready to, oh no, actually we have to install this cover first. So this just clips on like so. All right, so reinstalling it, we're just gonna line it up with that mark and then thread on this bolt by hand. And we can torque this down to 46 foot pounds. Make sure you have your connector plugged in. So once we torque it down, we can get that airbag plugged back in and reseat it. And we can take it for a test drive. All right, so I plugged in that little OBD2 adapter thing and we can see that the steering wheel is working. So if I, you can see that the lights light up. But overall the quality I can start to see why it's so cheap it's a little flimsy but overall I'm happy with it and there you guys have it that's how you install a custom carbon fiber steering wheel with a shift light at home if this is the first video you're catching in mind, please consider subscribing. And if you feel like you've learned something new or interesting, please drop a like and comment down below. I'll see you in the next one.